everyone, my name is Peana and welcome to my channel. And today I am tackling League of Dragons by Naomi Novik. This is the final novel in the Temeraire series, which is a nine book long series. So this series has been utter journey for me. Like I haven't enjoyed a series as much as this since Sergei Lukianenko's watch series, which was a while ago. And I'm kind of sad that it's over, to be honest, but I guess it had to end somewhere. So this is it, this is the last novel. So throughout all of these novels, we have followed the story of Lawrence, uh, Aviator and his dragon, Temeraire, as they fight Napoleon, because this series is alternative history. Nomi Novik imagined the Napoleonic Wars but with dragons, because I guess someone had to. So this book starts with Napoleon's army limping out of Russia and Nomi Novik definitely did do her research before she started this, like, because obviously she added her touch of fantasy to it, like with the whole invasion of Brazil and Napoleon marrying an Incan empress, like she took certain liberties shall we say. But overall, the actual history of the war and the people involved is pretty accurate. Because Napoleon did try and invade Russia and um, yeah, well, let's just say it didn't end well. And he did go limping out La Grande Armée being a fraction of what it was to begin with. And this was the beginning of his downfall. And the book opens with one of the dragons from Napoleon's army and her rider just basically dying of hunger in the snow. It's such a devastating scene because like obviously they want to defeat Napoleon but watching the army just stagger out through a Russian winter complete with starvation is really quite a powerful image. The Chevalier was not dead when they found her but the scavengers had already begun to pick at her body a cloud of rancorous crows lifted when Temeraire's shadow fell over the clearing, and a stoat slunk away into the underbrush, coat white, muzzle red. As he dismounted, Lawrence saw its small, hard, shining eyes peering patiently out from beneath the bramble. The French dragon's immense sides were sunken in between her ribs so deeply that each hollow looked like a span of a rope bridge. They swelled out and in with every shallow breath, the movement of her lungs made visible. She did not move her head, but her eyes opened a very little. It rolled to look on them and close again without any sign of comprehension. Iskierka and Temeraire had an egg together and the egg was left in China, but they discover that Lien, the evil Chinese dragon who is working with Napoleon, has been plotting to steal it, so they go and get it back. And Lawrence gets captured by the French army. So Temeraire ends up stuck with the egg, and this is when it decides to hatch into a rather curious character. So Temeraire and Iskierka have a daughter together, and this dragonette is, she is just so cute, and she is almighty smart. And she has, from the onset, a very, very different approach to war, because from since the beginning of this series, it's been all about winning the war and defeating Napoleon. However, this new dragon, who's been on all sides of this, she spent time with the British, she spent time with the Chinese, and she's also spent time with the French army, and the, like, while they're in the eggs, the dragons can kind of hear whatever's going on, and that's how they learn to speak, that's how they learn about politics and everything. And she's come to the conclusion that the answer is not uh, one army defeating another, it is to install peace in a prosperous way. And she doesn't have any kind of patriotism, not like Temeraire who is like fighting for the British, or fighting for the Chinese, she's like, I'm gonna go with whoever has the best plan at keeping peace. And obviously Temer is really bugged by this. Because for him, like his entire life has been fighting Napoleon and the, his unique goal has been defeating Napoleon. So now suddenly this dragon arrives with a completely different point of view. So that's really interesting. 
But Temera never lost his plan to get more independence for dragons. And this is starting to happen in Britain. There is now a dragon in Parliament. They are trying to get voting rights. They are trying to get more, uh, like, to get them on a payroll. And he decides to set up his own League of Dragons, where they all have their own share and their own uh, salary based on, on what they do. And they try and con they have this great big dinner where they try and convince all the dragons and dragon riders to be a part of this, including feral dragons, because there's a deal with the, the Scottish feral dragons whom Napoleon is trying to win over, saying that he will give them land that humans won't be able to settle on and kick them out of. So it's also been interesting to look back on this entire series and just see how far Lawrence has come because he started off as a naval officer, he was a captain of a ship, and he had to stop and become an aviator and enter a world that he knew nothing of that was very different from his world as a captain in the navy. It was very moving, like that first novel that I read last year, it was when first the first lockdown happened. He is at first very upset and very angry about having to become an aviator, but then he really gets to know Temeraire and love Temeraire and realise that this creature he is now bound to is way more intelligent and way more interesting than he had previously thought, and that the aviators have a much more noble lifestyle than the, the Navy do. Because being in the Navy is all about capturing other ships, it's all about prizes, now he has gone to actually serve a purpose, especially when he, when the dragons are sick and they decide to send the sickness over to France, over to the continent, potentially endangering the lives of millions of dragons. Despite them being their enemy, Lawrence decides to take a stand, become a traitor to the realm, delivering the cure to Napoleon in order to stop this from happening, because Temeraire insisted upon it because it was the right thing to do. And Temeraire, who has such a strong moral compass, who has such a sense of logic, that Lawrence became influenced by that and ended up moving towards becoming a better person. And I did very much resent book eight. I didn't really see the purpose of it at first. Like, uh, Lawrence loses his memory and kind of reverts back to the person he was before he met Temeraire. But after reading the, the last novel, it kind of struck me that this, this is how far he's come. And all these things that he's learnt by being around Temera, by being around all the people like Granby and Darkie and everyone that he would have had no respect for before because uh, Granby's homosexual and he was very angry in Book 8 when he discovered this. He was like, oh my god, how could I have been friends with such a person? The, obviously the dragons don't see what the problem is with this. And that's what he became influenced by. So he really did kind of take a step back and get the full contrast of who he was back uh, when he was a captain in the Navy, as opposed to who he is now after nine novels and what was it, six or seven years of adventuring? I have got flies absolutely everywhere. I don't know where they're coming from. Are they, what, why are you here? What are you eating? How are you here? I haven't opened any windows today. And the final part of this novel, which is probably... I mean, I found it kind of sad, really, because like the novel didn't end in the way that I thought it would. But obviously it ends with them finally defeating Napoleon and finally winning the war. And then they are faced with the reality of like, what do they do now? Because, as I said, Temeraire has spent his entire life fighting in a war. And so was Lawrence, you know, he was in the Navy and now then he was in, he was an aviator in the Aerial Corps and now that's it. They have done their duty. They have saved their country. So what do they do now? So there is a discussion about, do they go back to China? Do they go back to Australia where they started building a home for themselves? Or do they stay in Britain and try and advance the, the cause of dragons in Parliament? And it does kind of feel, it does feel like a, a big emptiness has now installed itself in their lives. Uh, but it was a very satisfying ending. It didn't entirely go the way I thought it was. I thought Lawrence would hook up with someone, to be honest. I thought he would hook up either with um, the uh, lady aviator, whose name I can't remember, Lily's captain, or uh, obviously I, he, he has this relationship with a woman called Jane all the way through, who's uh, the admiral for the aerial court. But like, it, it, it is, it's clear that like that's not going to go anywhere. Like This is just a, a fling that they have. Uh, but it's not serious. Like at one point he asks her if she will marry him. 
because coming from a place of like honor where women you can't have a relationship with a woman unless you are married to them and obviously in the aerial court they have a very different attitude to this and so he he asked her to marry him and she's like why would i do that so that was weird um or failing that Tharki, he's been hanging around a lot uh to like the point where they just randomly bump into each other I did start to feel like this is not a coincidence anymore, surely. Tharki is looking for trouble. Um, so, uh, but no, he, he's, he's, he, I guess Temeraire is always going to be Temeraire. Him and Temeraire. There is a discussion at the beginning. There's this woman, like, uh, um, when they're in Lithuania, I think. And there's this big debate about whether or not she's going to marry someone else there. Their, their crew um, and that's quite a funny moment there's this, this whole thing and it obviously does come up that maybe Lawrence should get married with her and um, <laughs> so that doesn't happen <laughs> So the Temeraire series by Naomi Novik is officially my favourite series it is I love fantasy I love dragons I love classics and this is so Victorian classic with dragons and fantasy, everything I love, bundled into one glorious nine book long series, which I have now finished and will always have a very special place in my heart. So that was it. That was Temeraire. So on that note, thank you so much for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please tell me what you think in the comment section. I found out that apparently Peter Jackson has the rights uh, for adaptations of this. Do we want to see a Temeraire movie? I don't know. Um, my big question is, who's going to play Lawrence? I've got my money on Lee Pace, but tell me what you think in the comments. Who should play Lawrence? So thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>